So let's consider a neutrally buoyant solid cube suspended in a fluid. The cube has width delta x, height delta y, and depth into the page delta z. And we can work out the net force on the cube by considering the pressure on each face. If the pressure on the left hand face is P, then the pressure on the right hand face is P plus partial dP partial x times delta x. And this shows that the force in the x direction, fx, is equal to P delta y delta z minus P plus partial dP dx delta x times delta y delta z and that's equal to minus partial dp by dx times delta x times delta y times delta z. And if we repeat this in the other directions, we get that the force is minus grad p times delta x delta y delta z. Now let's write f equals ma for this cube. We'll get that f, the force, is equal to rho delta x delta y delta z, where rho is the density and delta x, delta y, delta z is the volume. And the acceleration of the cube is dv by dt. And this velocity here is held by the cube. And now we substitute in this expression here for f. And we get that minus grad p is equal to rho ordinary dv by dt, where that v is the velocity held by the cube. Now let's do this instead for an imaginary cube of fluid. So we start from the same expression as before, minus grad p is equal to rho ordinary dv by dt, where that v is held by the blob of fluid. And now we express this in terms of the field properties, rho big D v, the material derivative, by dt. First velocity is held by the blob of fluid, whereas this velocity is held by the velocity field. And now we substitute in the expression for big dv by dt. We get that minus grad p is equal to rho, the density, times partial dv by dt plus v, the velocity field, dot grad, all in brackets, acting on v. And again, I want to highlight that all of these properties here, rho, v, and p are field properties. This is the Euler equation. It is f equals ma written for an inviscid fluid. If we add on the viscous terms, we get the Navier-Stokes equation, which again is just f equals ma written for a viscous fluid. And this equation is valid at every point in space. It's worth comparing this with the momentum equation expressed in terms of a control volume. Here we say we have some volume of fluid, and it has a certain surface and a certain volume. The first term is the rate of change of momentum in the volume. The second term is the rate at which momentum enters the volume. The third term are the body forces, such as gravity. And then the fourth term is the integration of the pressure forces around the surface. The Euler equation is exactly the same thing, but written around a point of space. So we see the first term is the rate of change of momentum in the volume. The second term corresponds to the convection of momentum. The body forces can be included. They weren't on the previous page, but they can be. And the fourth term is the force arising from the pressure gradient.